Hello Millies, welcome back to Doll Mill. Today I'm gonna work on a different uh, canvas, if you will. Still a doll, don't worry. <laughs> I just wanted to try something other than Monster High or Ever After High dolls. Remember that review I made a while ago about the fully jointed chibi doll I got from banggood.com? Well, I believe it is its turn to get a makeover. What do you guys think? She's so tiny and adorable. <laughs> Yep, I decided it's gonna be a little girl. Thankfully, she doesn't come with a factory face-up, so we won't have to do much for the prep, except for some basic cleanup before we roll her body inside a protective plastic burrito, or like we pronounce in my own country, burrito, <laughs> so we can take her out and give her a traditional two to three layers of Mr. Super Clear to seal up her face. Now to begin the face-up. I'm sketching with a light pink just to get a feel for the eyes. I'm coming up with her design on the spot and I didn't plan anything ahead, so cross your fingers for me. Let's just go with the flow. I'm liking how the pink looks on her, so I think I'm gonna stick with a the pink theme. I'll use red to draw the eye lines instead of black to stay within the pink theme we have chosen. As I've mentioned in previous videos, layering up is always important here. Add color until you cannot add more, then you seal again, then you add more color, until every color is very sharp and bright enough. I want her to have a sweet and playful expression, and because she is a small kid her makeup is gonna be very soft and natural. Do we have enough time here for a ramble? Maybe a tiny one? <laughs> well, I guess I can talk about what plans I have ahead. I'm working on making my own BJD online shop and I'm currently designing my first BJD. I want to make a special video series of the process of making the BJD, which will be a Patreon exclusive. For those of you that have no idea what a BJD is, it's the acronym for Ball Jointed Doll. It's a high-quality resin-made doll originated from Japan and now uh, most companies come from Korea, China, there's some European and, you know, uh, individuals like me that want to have their own shops and things like that. You can Google them, they're awesome. Um, I'm showing here a few examples too. They're very expensive though because of the high-quality material, so... Uh, yeah, it's basically and it's not a toy. It's basically an adult collector's edition doll if you want to call it like that like a Like um, a collector's figure. I also have some other ideas Like uh, for example, I want to try to make a TV drama made with dolls obviously, which will also be a patron exclusive Don't worry. I will keep posting new videos here, too But those projects will be my little hidden ultra special secret gems as for future projects here, I want to try customizing one of the big Monster High dolls and I also want to try inserted eyes. If you don't know what I mean, you will. <laughs> Maybe finally get around to making the Powerpuff Big Sister, please? You've all been asking about her, so I think I'll give that a try. Oh, and the Rowdy Rough Boys too, of course. We'll get there soon enough, don't worry. So many plans and projects. And so little time... Okay then. Once we finish with the face up and seal one last time, we add some gloss to her eyes and lips. With that done, the face up is finished. And we can move on to the hair. I'm not gluing the hair this time. I want to try making a wig. We'll need a piece of stretchy fabric to do this. But first, we need to cover her with some plastic to protect her from the glue we'll be using. Then we grab the fabric and put it over her head securing it with a hair tie over the eyes and above the ears. Pull onto the fabric to try to reduce any creases. The smaller the scale of the wig, the harder this will be. So try your best, but don't worry if you don't manage completely. Look at mine, still got so many creases left. Now we bring out our white glue. I'm using Mod Podge in Matte, and I'm using a brush to spread a first layer of glue all over her head. We have to wait for it to dry and then give it another two or three layers more. So while we wait, I'm gonna prepare the wefts. 
I have some leftover yarn from Retro Dolls that has the perfect shade of pink I want for her hair. I used it on Tansy last time, remember? I brushed the yarn to get rid of some of the excess and then straightened it with my hair straightener. Now I cut it into smaller parts and use some white glue on the edges to make the webs. When the glue dries, we can cut the excess to make the edges straight. We can go back to the wig now that all the layers are dry. We remove the hair tie and get it off the head. Carefully cut the excess fabric. Now I put it back on her head to mark where I'm gonna cut on the front and mark the beginning of her hairline. Time to glue the webs. As always, go slow, layer by layer, and cutting as needed. Then I just style it a little by shortening the length and cutting the tips, giving it a more natural look, if pink hair can be considered natural. The hair is all done. Now we move on to the clothes. Staying with the theme, we'll use pink, and to counterbalance, I'll use some white fabric. Once again, I don't have a pattern for this size of doll, so I'm putting her against the fabric and measuring by eye. I want her to have a very big loose shirt. Then we cut the pattern. Now I sew both pieces together on the edges. Turn it right inside out. Then I'm gluing some ribbons to simulate the hemming in pink. Let's try it on. It's looking good so far. Now I draw a small pocket of pink and glue it directly on top. I feel like it still needs a little more color, so I want to take this chance to use my new 3D fabric paint I got from Artesa to draw a star pattern. First I draw the stars with some magic fabric marker. And then I'm using a toothpick so it is easier to distribute the paint. I don't want my girl to go commando. No sir, we don't do that. So I'm gonna make her some small shorts. Again, I wing in the pattern. I glue the edges of the bottom part of the shorts with fabric tack to hem them. Then, with the right sides touching, I saw the crotch point. Before I close the other side, I want to add the elastic string at the top. Fold a little fabric to cover it and sew that. When that's done, I can finish the shorts by sewing the other side. We turn them inside out and try them on our doll. Tighten the ends and make a knot which we will hide later on, but for now I think it looks good. You can see I added a ribbon as an extra detail on the shorts here, but we're focusing on the next part of the custom, the shoes. Using watercolors tutorials as reference, once again, I cover the feet with some aluminum foil and then layer up some pieces of paper tissue with watered down white glue. As the wig, we gotta do two or three layers and wait for them to dry in between. So while we wait, how about we concentrate on accessories? I wanna give her some type of headband, so I grabbed one from my accessory box that would fit her. I remove the unneeded details and leave it like a basic band. Then I paint it in a lighter pink to match the shade she's using on her clothes. Now I draw a couple of ovals on the pink fabric. We cut four and pin them in pairs. We want to glue the edges and leave a little room at the bottom so we can flip it inside out later. Then I want to add a bit of glue in the middle and press together so it creates a little fold. I glued the pieces, which now I notice resemble bunny ears. Happy accident, I guess. I glued them to the headband and then I glued a small ribbon in the middle. This way it will look like it's just a big piece of fabric tied in the shape of a bunny style bow on the headband. I finally decorate the headband with some tiny colorful, uh, whatever they're called in English, you get my idea. <laughs> Head accessory is finished. So I want to give her one more thing and I thought, why not a cute bracelet? So I grabbed this, uh, this uh, whatever they're called, my god, my English failed me today. And I just took some pieces on a string, which I then tied to her wrist and there we go. Small cute bracelet for her tiny. Back to the shoes. They're finally dry so we can remove them. Get rid of the aluminum foil inside and then cut to the desired height. Using some pink polymer clay, I cover the shoes. Then slowly go adding details on top. 
and with a needle I draw a pattern on the soles of the shoes. When I'm happy with everything, I just put them in the oven at 130 degrees Celsius, which is about 265 Fahrenheit, you Americans, for about 25 to 30 minutes. Now I can finally glue some cute accents to finish. At this point I was completely done with the custom and I was posing her for the pictures when tragedy stuck and both her legs broke. The joints were too stiff and I bent too hard. If you follow me on Instagram you saw my story where I was asking everyone for tips on how to fix this. Most of you adorable people recommended me to watch delightful Sakura Pink video where she shows how to make joints. I thank you all from the bottom of my heart for all the tips, my girl was safe thanks to you all. So now that I watched Delightful's video, I take out my drill for the very first time. I bought it two years ago and I have never used it. It's your time, Paolo. Yes, I have named him. He shall be Lola's BFF. I have to get rid of that little ball inside, but the plastic is too hard. So let's try Paolo for the first time. Not bad, Paolo. Not bad. I think I'll keep you. I also drill a hole in the middle part. Now I mark where I'm gonna drill once again. I measured the size of the drill I need against the wire I'll be using. The holes are made! I put the wire through them and I cut to the right length. Now I use my two-part epoxy glue to secure the wires in place and leave it to dry. I regretted it after I realized, way too late, that I should have made the tiny hooks and put them through before gluing the wire in place. <sighs> the following half an hour was so frustrating, don't make my mistakes, Millies. But in the end, I managed, and you should be left with something like this. Now I grabbed the tiniest elastic band I could find, and I made it even smaller and tighter. And with the help of a string, I pass it through the hole we made in the middle piece and now secure it to the tiny hook on the other leg. It does work, but the legs are way too loose. I need to try something tighter. I will use this elastic string I usually pick for the clothes and do the same thing. One hook first, then through the middle, through the other hook, and then I pull tight. I make a knot and cut the excess. It is still a little looser than I would have liked, but it is way better than before. Disaster has been fixed, and with this, we have finished the custom. This time for good. It was really fun to work in a different doll this time around. I adore Monster High and Ever After High to pieces and I always will. I think I just needed a little change of pace. 
working on a tinier scale than usual was slightly more challenging, but hey, we gotta hone the craft of miniature customizing, right? And she did turn out adorable, if I say so myself. Don't you wanna just pinch those tiny cheeks? I think I will call you Mei Mei. You look like a Mei Mei. Little Mei Mei is super excited to be adopted by one of you and get to join your family. If any of you Millies want to take her home with you, please leave me a private message on my Instagram or send an email to my business email, which I will leave in the description below. I want to take this time once again to thank all my wonderful patrons for their eternal support. All the love and hugs and rainbows and chocolate chip cookies to you guys, now and forever. I hope you enjoyed watching this video. I send you all many hugs and kisses, Millies. You are the best family. I will see you on the next one. Cheers!